Good morning. So this is a, uh, an example demonstration of the actual process we use to collect data and analyze the data to get the performance curves for any motor without a loading device. This is the MDS portable dynamometer. If you see our setup here, we've got uh, uh, one horsepower, just under one, uh, or sorry, one, uh, uh, one kilowatt industrial three-phase motor with uh, current sensors. The voltage sensors are attached underneath. So we're measuring three currents, three voltages, and we're measuring a speed. As you can see here, we've got a small uh, shaft encoder just magnetically clamped onto the end of the shaft. The only reason we have this flywheel on here is just to have enough landing space for the, uh, for the magnet to attach because the shaft on a motor this small is, uh, is too small to attach it magnetically like that. Anyway, that's the motor and the setup. Over here on the software, if we switch over and zoom in on the software screen, we can see that uh, we, we'll take a second and show you how that's all set up. So what we've got here is we have, a, uh, we have our motor data where we've typed in our nameplate information. We type in some electrical uh, information about the motor. Uh, we've previously measured the winding resistance for this motor, and uh, that's pretty much all we need. So what we'll do now is we'll actually run the motor and uh, I'll show you what we see on the screen here. So we're just running it at a pretty low voltage. You see the starting uh, voltage which is this curve and the starting current here and if we do a if we go over here and check our uh, leads we find out that we've got the current and voltage attachments to this motor in the correct sequence and in the correct polarity. CTs can have uh, an opposite polarity because of the, the direction that the wire passes through the clamp on CT will affect the polarity. So in this case we're good so we just did a quick no, no load run there here. Uh, we've got our phaser diagram here and our needles here, uh, our meters uh, on the top. So what we're going to do now is we'll go ahead and shut off the motor and what we're going to do next is we're going to go down and record uh, three starts. The number of starts that we need, so if we go back to the go back to the camera here, every time we want to test a motor, we will uh, we will test uh, you need at least three runs of the motor at three different voltages in order to extract the losses. So the first one I'm going to do here is we'll go down and we'll say, uh, we want to do a 25 second recording. I'm going to have about uh, somewhere around uh, 62 volts. That's just for my uh, annotation so I can go back and find it later. We start the recorder and then we start the motor. And you can see the motor spins up. We let it run for uh, five or six seconds and then we shut it off. So we can capture the coast down as well. Uh, so there's one run at uh, about 60 volts. While that's finishing up the recording, I'll go ahead and change the voltage to, I'll increase the voltage to about uh, 120 volts, something like that. I'll make a notation here that this is 100, 120 volts. We'll start the recording. Start the motor, let it run for five or ten seconds, shut the motor off, and while it's coasting down, I'll go over and change to another motor voltage. This time, we'll, this motor is wired for uh, 240 volts, so I'll go ahead and set it up for, or 230 rather, so I'll go ahead and Set this one to 230 volts. Start the recording. Start the motor. You notice it comes up to speed very, very quickly. Let it run for five or 10 seconds. Shut the motor off. And while it's coasting down, uh, it's finishing up here. So if we want to, we can do more runs. Uh, the more runs you apply, 
the finer the resolution is uh, that you'll see in the uh, that you'll see in the data here in a minute. In fact, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and since it's easy to do, let's collect some data around uh, around uh, 200 volts. Two hundred volts. Start the recording. Start the motor. Comes up to speed quickly. Let it run for several seconds and shut it off. And then while that's coasting down, we'll change the voltage back. Uh, just one more run. Let's go around a hundred volts this time. Uh, let's say around 160 volts. That should be a good number. Again, we can use just use the first three if we wanted to, but since these runs go really quickly, I'll go ahead and uh, start the recording, start the motor, let it run for uh, five or ten seconds, shut the motor off, and that'll... Uh, now, this way we'll have five runs. Well, so we have a little bit more resolution in our data and our results. So the recording's almost finished here. So if we zoom in on the screen, we'll uh, watch the analysis process. Okay, so I'm going to shut this application off. This is the data recording application. And I'm going to go and start the uh, analysis process. What we do is we select the recordings we want to analyze, and those recordings are over here. And we'll just take the last five. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Open that up. The software will go through and read in the uh, nameplate information here. And uh, I see we've made a slight mistake when we put our nameplate information. We're actually running the motor at 60 hertz, so we need to re-rate this motor up to 60 hertz because it's actually a 250 hertz European motor. So let me type in the correct uh, rating values for 60 hertz. I'll go ahead and uh, call this our re-rated Analysis. We'll save these settings. Uh, one other thing I need to check here is that the range on the pulse tack is correct. By the way, if we made a mistake before while we were measuring the current or voltage and had it in the wrong sequence or the wrong polarity on the CTs, we can correct that also. So I'll go ahead and save those settings and we'll go ahead and run the analysis. So what's going on here is that you see over here, obviously on the left, these are just the, the names of the recordings. This is the motor nameplate information, including the measured resistance that we had. Um, the, this information here, this instrument has uh, six extra channels. Uh, we're using one of those channels for our um, speed sensor. And uh, oh, I see there's a vestige of an old test left in here where we were actually measuring torque. Uh, this thing that says torque here, that's ignored. Uh, we're not using that in this case. Uh, this in a, and over here we talk about, or we check the uh, test conditions. So we, uh, this is an across the line start. We're using a pulse tack with 100 pulses per revolution, fixed line frequency, and we're not testing a DC motor, so this is grayed out. We want it to compute torque. So what the software is doing here is, first of all, it goes out and gets that recording. Uh, you can see those recordings are 25 seconds in length, uh, which turns out to be about a 25, uh, two and a half million samples on uh, 12 channels uh, per data file. So the data files are pretty good size. Uh, too big to analyze in Excel, by the way, because uh, Excel won't handle that many lines, samples. So it's going through and reading each one of those data files, 
Uh, first, it applies a low-pass filter to cut down on the volume of the data uh, and to clean up any uh, uh, background noise, electrical noise, artifacts we might have. Uh, we can set this wherever we want. You can see that's under user control. Uh, then, it, after it applies the filter, it goes through and checks to find the uh, various events in the recordings. It tries to find the power on time. It'll find the uh, time at which it gets to full speed and the time at which it gets to power off. Uh, so it can use those times in the analysis. Uh, in this case, we're doing direct across the line starts. If you happen to have a situation where you're using a soft starter, whether it be something like a Phoenix uh, variable voltage, uh, constant Hertz uh, transformer, automatic uh, uh, continuously variable transformer, or whether you're using a drive, which is a constant volts per hertz transform, uh, constant volts per hertz power supply, or whether you're using a uh, just a, a discrete tapped transformer that only gives you four or five different voltage levels, uh, which you apply and then start it across the line at those levels. Uh, you just select which uh, analysis, which start type you had up here in this area, and then change some settings appropriately and the, and the analysis will uh, proceed accordingly. So you also notice here that there's some color changes going on here. Right now it's running the analysis. Um, you can watch the progress down here in this uh, uh, line here where it says what it's doing. And then after it goes through and analyzes those individual runs, then it goes back and looks at those five runs uh, collectively and gets them across the uh, across the board calculations. Uh, there's an IEEE procedure, for example, that says you take the no load uh, watts, no load power at, at um, uh, the no load power at various voltages, and if you process that accordingly, you can back out the friction and windage, and you can back out the actual, actually the core loss. Uh, and of course we measured the winding resistance so we can get the uh, winding resistance. So it uh, looks like it's ready. So I can uh, press the report and it looks like the most recent report is this one here on the top. So if we just open it up, we use Excel actually as our, uh, as our uh, reporting tool. So if I just go file, uh, print, uh, this one happens to have a one page report. Oops, sorry, I picked the wrong one there. Uh, this one here. So if I say file print, there's our one page report with the uh, torque curve, some uh, confidence indicators over here on the right, uh, a table of values, no load and locked rotor values here on the in this table, uh, calcul the calculated inertia and the calculated uh, friction and windage loss. You just press print and that's your basic report. We also have available a, a much more detailed engineering report that's generated at the same time. And it's a multi-tab um, multi spreadsheet where you can pick and choose the data you want to look at. So for example, this sheet says speed. So we're looking at the startup, uh, steady state and coast down uh, for those five runs. Here's what the average uh, acceleration, the average start time uh, versus voltage looks like. Uh, we notice that if we put all these starts on top of each other and plot it, uh, adjust the plots accordingly in log log, all the data lays on top of each other during start. And then here's all the data laying on top of each other on the coast down. And we can see the voltage results. Uh, we can see power, efficiency. Uh, here's our no load watts versus, uh, versus volts. Here's our locked rotor watts versus volts. Uh, torque results, um, impedance results, and so on and so forth. And there's, a, uh, there's an IEEE model in here as well. So that's pretty much it. I won't go through the details. We'll leave that to the training course that we have. Uh, where we talk about all these individual kinds of results and how we get to these graphs uh, later. So if we switch back out to the camera, uh, we can see where that took that whole process took us uh, something around 10 minutes. 
to, of course, we had a little bit of setup time to uh, connect to the motor and uh, run, but running through the process only took us about 10 minutes for five runs. If we'd only done three runs, uh, would have been uh, a lot less, of course. Anyway, that's the uh, overview of the demo. Thanks for watching, and I hope you'll take a look at uh, some of the other videos on the website.